I'm working on <clears throat> my performance art. That's me cutting myself off from the world. I'm going nowhere as an artist. Um, so this video continues <clears throat> along the Steam tradition of SQL Server performance tasting menu videos in which I show you some crazy kooky little thing about the way SQL Server works without much of a narrative or without much of uh, a story to back it. And in this video, which, I don't know, may exist somewhere, may, may, may exist in other places, I don't know. Who can tell anymore? It's a crazy world. There's probably a deep fake of this video somewhere. Uh, <coughs> in this video, I will talk about how better indexes can help you make better use of your SQL Server's buffer pool, which is always a good thing to do because you know, a lot of people, when they uh, they give memory to SQL Server, they're idiots. Uh, they might be, um, I don't know, <laughs> they, they might just be sysadmins or vmadmins or just come from a non-SQL Server background, and they're just not uh, well-tuned into how, uh, how SQL Server uses memory, how necessary memory is for SQL Server performance, and things like that. So the, the three things, the three places where SQL Server uses memory most that people will care about are the buffer pool, that is where you cache pages, data pages from your tables, your indexes, uh, so that SQL Server can access them, access them for different activities. Doesn't matter if it's a read or a write, any page that you need to deal with needs to end up in memory. Beyond that, SQL Server also, as we have learned in the past couple of few videos, needs memory to give queries for query memory grants. Uh, and those query memory grants can grow quite sizable. In the last video, we saw a 9.7 gig memory grant for just selecting the top 1,000 rows. That's a pretty good chunk of memory, uh, almost no matter what kind of uh, configuration your server has. The third thing is the plan cache, and a good, stable, reliable plan cache can really, really be useful. I, wouldn't, I won't say for SQL Server performance, even though it can be, but a good, stable, reliable plan cache can be really useful for SQL Server performance investigations where you can go and dig in and look at uh, resource-intensive queries and other things like that. So with that out of the way, let's look at how we can make better use of our buffer pool with better indexes. So this is kind of a funny, uh, funny demo. So what I do in this demo is I have a couple views and in one view, it will tell us, it will describe our indexes to us. So this will tell us some information about our indexes, the size, uh, how the data is made up, stuff like that. And in another view, I, I get some information about what's currently in SQL Server's buffer pool, which at this point is nothing. There's nothing in there. So what this, uh, what this demo aims to do is run this query to look at our indexes, make sure that memory, there's absolutely nothing in memory, uh, validate that by selecting from our memory view, running a query, right, getting the query plan for that one query, uh, and then after that query is done, looking at what's in memory when we're finished, all right? So what we do is, uh, well, I should probably just highlight from the right spot here. Ha, 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 it'll be fun. So let's start by highlighting this stuff on down to there. And I don't need query plans for this, so I'll run this. And the first result set back will be what our indexes look like. Our second result set back is what's currently in memory. Our third result set back is how many, or is the count from the user's table. Our third result set back is the query plan. And our last result set back is what ended up in memory after the query ran. So you can see some obvious parallels between the size of our index and what ends up in memory when we're done, right? Just about the whole entire thing. The query plan will tell us that we scanned the entire clustered index and that we used a stream aggregate to do our count. That's all well and good, except we had to read <laughs> 350 megs of data into memory just to count rows, which is maybe not exactly what we want to do. Now, maybe that clustered index gets used all the time. Maybe that's not a big deal. I don't know. I don't, hopefully not. 
hopefully you've designed indexes to make that a, a limited liability index. Let's go back a little bit and let's look at what happens if we run a slightly different query, right? So we'll count, let's, let's quote this one out and let's quote this one in. I believe that's what the kids are calling it. Now this is only gonna count rows where reputation is over 100,000. We don't need the entire index to count those rows. At least, I don't think we should, but golly and gosh, what's this demo gonna show us? I don't know. We'll just have to run it and see. So we 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 have that we have what, what's in our we have what's what our index looks like, and we have what's currently in memory, and we have 613 rows. Okay, that's a lot less than the 2.5ish million we read before, and we well, we still have a clustered index scan here, and disappointingly, we still end up with about 350 megs of data in memory. So that wasn't so great. It wasn't so hot there. Not not what I wanted to do. Not what I wanted to happen, rather. So let's create an index on that reputation. Con. We had a missing index request on reputation. We should We should create it, and we should see what happens. But first, let's go back to our original query. So let's let's tag this one out, and let's tag this one in. Right, so now we have now we're just going to get a count of the whole table again, and let's run through this scenario. Our first result that's going to change a little bit. Now we get back a second row for what our indexes look like, and this has our na our non-clustered index in it. Right, this index called whatever, and this index is much smaller. It has the same number of rows because it has the same. It's on the it's on the entire table. There's an accurate row count in there. But we only have about a tenth or ten percent of the pages uh, that we need in this index that we need to make up the clustered index. The clustered index is every column in the table ordered by the clustered index key column. That's a much less dense index. It's a lot more data that has to fit on those leaf level data pages. For just an index on reputation, we can pack a lot more information in there. If we use like row or page compression, we could probably pack that even tighter. But the having using 10% of the pages also means we use about 10% of the physical space that that index does. But since SQL Server can count rows, the number of rows just as effectively with that index, with that narrow index as it can with the clustered index, we end up reading that into memory instead. So we have a much smaller memory footprint with the narrow non-clustered index here. This gets even better when we when we change the when we ch change the demo back to uh, this, where we have a filter on reputation, because now that we have an index where we're able to seek to data in, we can use an even smaller portion of that index to fulfill our count to uh, fulfill our queries count request. So let's look at what happened now. We have, again, our narrow non-clustered index. We have the number of rows that we counted, over 100,000. And now, rather than having all 33, well, let's call it 38 megs of this index up in memory, we only read in, oh gosh, a little bit less than a meg of that to get just the rows we need. So, yes, inde the right indexes can help you make better use of SQL Server's buffer pool. They absolutely can. Of course, if you have a lot of indexes, you can run into problems, especially if you have a lot of overlapping indexes or unused indexes. Unused indexes particularly can be a problem because those all need to be maintained when SQL Server modifies data. SQL Server is unable to play favorites in any way where it can say, you know what, I'll, I'll, I'll modify you later. We're not really using you right now. Whenever you modify data, all, all or part of those indexes need to get read up into memory, and then we need to modify those pages, at some point flush them back to disk, transaction log stuff, boring, has nothing to do with query performance, so I don't, I put that out of my head. <laughs> I'm kidding, it's all very interesting. Uh, so having a lot of unused indexes can also be a problem because not only do you have more things to lock when you modify the table, you know, more blocking, things like that. Um, but you also need, you also end up sort of polluting the buffer pool with those additional indexes that will never help a read query, but need to get maintained when we modify the base table. So, please, uh, whenever you're tuning indexes, don't forget to make index consolidation and 
rocks, cleaning out old, uh, unused indexes, part of that process. Just adding indexes will often end up causing problems over, over, over time. It's something that I see constantly when working with clients. And it's something that I uh, like almost always have to hand over a big, long SQL file of changes to indexes. Like you <laughs> drop out all these, we're going to merge these in together. We're going to make one index instead of having five different indexes that are almost the same definition because stuff like that hurts RPO and RTO too, right? If you, the longer, more indexes you have, the bigger your database is, the more stuff you have to back up. When you need to restore a database, there's m more data size to restore. And, and it's just, you know, it's all, it's all ends up not being good, <laughs> good for many different, many different metrics that you can uh, measure with your SQL Server. So thank you for watching. I will see you over in the next video where I will talk about something else that I haven't quite decided on yet.